Julia with Crazy Island Studios and today for Art Journaling 101 I want to talk to you about why you should have a junk paint journal. Um, I haven't had a lot of videos out and I haven't had very many in this series um, as much as I want to and I love this series and it's got a really good uh, response to it. I'm just like behind on life. So if you're following my YouTube channel you get that. If you're only here for Art Journaling 101 um, kind of stuff you may not know what's going on, but life has just been kind of crazy for me lately. And right now I'm trying to do some videos where I don't have to like put my entire arm out. I recently got a tattoo for my birthday as a gift, which was awesome. Um, but it's on the inside of my forearm of my right arm. So when I paint, I can't, I, I, I can't, it not only does it hurt, but it is basically an open wound, which, um, shouldn't be sticking in paint and things that, you know, to have ingredients that could cause cancer so or just in general could cause infection so um, I haven't been really in my studio working because I'm trying to keep that all clean and you know all that good stuff plus right now you don't want to see it it is in the disgusting peeling scabby itchy phase of healing plus I've had a really bad skin reaction to the um, the the ointment stuff that you have to put on it so I have some like really really scary looking um like blisters from that anyways we'll move on so why should you have a junk paint journal what is a junk paint journal so for me a junk paint journal is where you throw your junk paint whenever you're working on a journal page and you have extra paint sitting over here on your palette or on your paintbrush or on your palette knife or leftover uh, modeling paste that you're scraping off of a stencil or you sprayed through a stencil or anything like that where you have to wipe something off or clean it up. First, you should stick it in here. You should stick some of it in here. This is my junk paint journal and I just flipped to a random page to write this and this will get covered up so I don't even worry about it. And you can just put whatever you want in here. My journal that I'm using if you can hear that loud noise, I apologize. That's my grandson playing on his tractor outside, his little tractor. Um, the book that I'm using is a Fabriano book, and I found this at like a Michael's or Joanne's in their journal section. It's super cheap. I want to say this big one was probably five or six dollars, something like that. Like super cheap. It might even be four dollars. I don't know. Super cheap. It's got really awful paper really thin it's it's like copy paper really it's nothing it's nothing amazing uh, because I live in Hawaii mine is <laughs> rusting because it is simply held together with two staples so seriously this is nothing special um, any any cheapo journal make your own if you want whatever um, this is 40 sheets it's eight and a half by 11 point se or eight and a quarter by 11 point seven so roughly copy paper size, right? Um, 60 pound paper, 85 grams if you're metric. Um, so 60 pound paper is really light. It's, it's nothing, it's nothing awesome. And that's not the point. You don't need good paper in here. You could use one with good paper if you want to. Like, absolutely go ahead. I choose to use a cheap one because I don't want to feel like I have any attachment to anything with this journal like I don't want to feel like I have to do anything amazing with it um, even in my freedom journal even though freedom doesn't matter it's I want it to look nice right I want good pages I want to play and have fun but I still want good pages so sometimes that doesn't work out but um, my reason for having the junk paint journal so that I don't waste all that paint plus eventually it will become a completed art journal so um, this is my first page, which I don't love, and look, my cover's coming off, it's ripping, like it's barely hanging on there, and it, it's okay, it'll be okay. And the outside, the dirtiness that you see on it is not much, but it does add up. Um, it's because I flop this open and I stick it right on top of my journal that has wet paint on it, if it's not something that'll get smudged um, too badly, and, and scrape up my extra paint and rub it on here. So, um, yeah, that's why the outside starts looking messy. And what do I do with it? I seriously just chunk extra paint in here randomly. Seriously randomly. My pages often stick together because I will put something on this page and then flip the page and put it on here too and then flip the page and put it on here too and then set it away. I 
try not to just close it after I do that. I'll set it up and just leave it like that and just throw it somewhere in my studio. So some of the pages, so that they're not like compressed together, but they will still eventually stick together and I just pull them apart. So far, surprisingly, not too bad, mostly because I'm not doing a whole page at once most of the time. Um, and eventually the pages become a journal page. So we'll start in the back because that gives you kind of an example. You can see I have some that are like stuck together. So I do many things in here. Sometimes I um, write out thoughts. I don't want to like hover on these because these are not nice thoughts. Um, <laughs> I do journal in here uh, very seldomly, but when I do, it's usually like I am like spilling my guts when I am pissed off or unhappy or something like that. So um, that all gets covered up though eventually. Uh, as you can see, I've made some marks on top of it. Uh, I will use the, the same stamp repeatedly until the paint is used up. So the, you'll find that like the similar patterns will be on different pages. Um, just layered on top. Uh, what was I doing one day? I, I had my crayons out and I thought, oh, I just wanted to throw some scribbles in here and make a background page with some watercolor crayons. So technically not excess paint, but I just wanted to like, I don't know, scribble. So I did in here because it didn't work on my journal page. And I was testing this, um, is me testing out a uh, new, like water bait, and not new to anybody in the world, but new to me, um, spray paint from Montana. I wanted to try spray paint in my journal um, just to see if it would be easier or quicker or in any way better, and I freaking love it, by the way. If you have the opportunity to buy it, I don't know if I'll ever buy any other color except maybe a white one, um, but right now I just have the plain, like, matte black or carbon black or whatnot so that I can spray it through my stencils because it dries so fast and in Hawaii that matters. Um, so I tested something there and here's more journal spilling and then I just like clean stamps off. I'll show you another example. That was like a stamp after or a stencil after I sprayed through it and there was paint left all over the stencil. I brought it over here and laid the stencil down and you get the reverse image. So I just keep doing it. This feels like there might be like gesso on it. I don't know. Maybe I had extra gesso. So I gessoed a page. Not typical. I don't usually. Um, again, playing with crayons. And then as you can see, if I have, I had a lot of extra black paint and I was playing with stamps one day. So they're all over in here. This is extra collage um, papers that I just had. I decided to throw some of those in there to see what I liked, um, especially just just because they're beautiful and not really like junk because some of these are wonderful um, pieces of papers that people have uh, gifted me, but this is where I used a part of it and I put it somewhere else and then I just threw the rest of it in here. A lot of times I save that in my scrap papers. As you can see, the more towards the front I get, the more buildup you're going to see because I've done layer after layer of whatever. This has, um, if you can read these words, it has um, a stencil with writing, lettering, and then I actually just went over it with one of these um, stamps, my little homemade stamps, and I just rubbed across the top really lightly so that brought that back out because I painted on top of it. This is all extra paint off of stencils and then other paints on top. And you can see this is not, this isn't pretty. There's nothing amazing going on here. Things get layered on, especially when there's a lot of black, then I'll pile more stuff on top. Um, there's a reverse image of a stencil and this one as well. And I just keep, keep piling. Um, if I have the circle maker out in black paint, again, if I'm making marks on a page, I usually have extra paint. So I'll finish making marks here as well. Um, this one's where I like, this page is actually all kinds of collage because it was going to be an Art Journaling 101 talking to you about um, collage glues, but it turned out to be just a shit video, so it was crap. I'm going to redo it. Um, so I've just been working on top of it, just piling stuff on. And eventually, like this is, I would say this is kind of a finished journal page, but I do, I, I have like gone back and added a couple things here and there. And I might continue to do so. Again, a reverse image of a stencil that I used. But as I go along, and this is extra modeling paste through another stencil. And as I go along, I just keep building layer after layer. As you can see, it just gets better and better the more layers of everything that you put on there. And there's no limit to how when you have to stop. You just keep going forever. Um, this one 
just has become a complete disaster and I kind of love it and I haven't added anything to it in a while just because I kind of love it and like these doodles I did sitting on the phone because I was bored so I pulled this out and doodled in it um, I haven't done anything on this one in a while either uh, even though I wouldn't necessarily consider it finished um, I kind of like where it's at right now so I just don't usually add anything on this page um, this is an example of an actual finished journal page and unfortunately uh, <laughs> I'm a doofus and I forgot to spray her with workable fixative and all of her shading was water soluble so whenever I and I did actually apply Daddy Van's wax to this page because these were sticking super bad and so I did apply um, wax to these which is not typical in this journal for me because I don't necessarily know when a journal page is done um, and I wiped off all of her shading so I just decided it was that's just too bad she's staying like that um, this one I was just playing this is a lot a lot of acrylic paint and it was very sticky and <laughs> Yeah, it's got wax on it. So we're calling that one done because it was these two pages were going to be just death if I didn't. Um, these are not done yet. This one might be done. I don't know. Uh, I just, like I said, I just keep piling things on. And this is a fantastic way for you to use up your extra paint to play with mark making, to find out some surprising things that you might like, like colors that go together that you would never expect. Um, or just different ways that you can pile like can you pile things on top of stencils or not or can you pile stuff on top of collage um, fabrics or whatnot so I just have a ton of stuff happening in here um, this actually has a ton of texture it's got uh, cheesecloth and glass bead gel and I hated whatever I did so it's got paint right on top of it right on top of it because I didn't like whatever was happening um, so definitely not a finished page and I just think it's a really valuable tool though for you to not waste your paint. Look at how much stuff I have in here. Like how much of that paint would have gone into the trash bin if I didn't put it somewhere. And you can always put it in your in your existing journal and start building backgrounds. That's another option if you don't want to have a junk paint journal. I personally love having the junk paint journal because at some point I eventually make something out of it. This is a finished journal page that I really love. Um, and it just, it's its just got stuff, stuff, and then covered up stuff, and who cares, right? This one is pretty much done. Um, I think I might have actually used this for uh, an inspiration stick challenge. And I used this journal so that I didn't have to feel like, I don't know, crazed about what I was doing. So I just used this journal. Um, that's a finished journal page. I think this might have been a creating on the couch really, really kind of awful girl face. I mean, I, I loved her at the time, but, you know, things have come a lot further since that day. So I've had this for a long time, and I wasn't sure how I was going to use it. And now that it's become my junk paint journal, I freaking love it. Um, this is another one that after I had a background done, I painted some flowers, which I thought were fun, and since then I've only added a few little random marks, but not much. It's pretty much what I would consider a completed page, but it's got texture on it because it's got leftover uh, modeling paste, all kinds of stuff. This page is insane. Don't know how I feel about it anymore, but I was playing with my fluorescent paints and having fun. So why should you have one? So that you can use up your extra paint. Like, for realsies. This one, again, a planned journal page. That one was a planned journal page. And then this kind of just morphed into my junk paint journal. And I love it. I I actually really enjoy flipping through here and finding places to add more stuff, to pile things on in here. And I have a lot of blank pages left to go. And, um, you know, even that, there's the start to one. I mean, you just keep piling stuff up so that you end up eventually with some finished journal pages and they start can start really simply with a mark here a mark there and or just one scrape of paint left over on your on your palette knife or your credit card and eventually turn into something really nice and it's kind of a fun challenge to go back into one of these that is just piled up like say this one has a ton of stuff on it it's got a lot of collage and a lot of color and a lot of stuff happening and at this point, I could come in and do some doodling with like a white paint pen and probably call this a finished page. Um, I don't know that I'll do that, but I could. And it kind of like these are not pages that I would normally sit down and 
think to create, which I think is also kind of great uh, in the fact that it kind of challenges you to try and make something, a journal page, out of something that was just happenstance, total craziness. Um, plus, why waste all your paint? And then at the end, you have this really fun journal that has a lot of crazy stuff in it that maybe you wouldn't put in your normal journal. Right? Right? This has stuff in here that I would not put in my, that I wouldn't think to like create a page like this or like this in my normal journal. And I've just been adding things here and there. I've got washi tape. Um, just, it's just a useful way to make sure that you don't waste any of your products because I hate wasting my products. I spend good money on a lot of them. And even if I'm buying craft paint, I, I still spend good money, right? Like you spend your money, it, it should not go to waste. There's my thought. It shouldn't go to waste. So I try not to waste anything as much as I can. Um, so this is always sitting right to the side of my stuff. Usually in my, in my journal, stack of journals I have it sitting right on top so that I can grab it whenever I am working on any journal page. Um, I can grab this and add whatever's left over. Even if it's just a tiny bit of something, I can add it in here. And the paper gets more sturdy. Even though it is really crap paper, the paper gets more sturdy once it's covered in paint, especially once it's covered in paint on both sides. So I'm not super worried about it uh, or the quality of the paper. It's kind of nice not to have to feel any stress whatsoever about what it is that I am creating because I'm not in one of my fancy journals. So I highly suggest that you get a cheap journal. You make one yourself, staple some computer paper together because really this is basically like like computer printer paper. Like that's, that's kind of what I would call the quality of it. Um, if you don't want to do that and you want to start using up your extra paint right now, in any of your journals that you're working in, this is one I don't have a whole lot going on in, um, and I've started doing keeping some sketches in it because I don't I don't draw enough. So I've started, um, and you can see this is one of those like junk pages <laughs> that I that I made. This this was not necessarily a plan, um, but I started sketching because or at least starting to try and do, if not daily, at least occasional sketches of things, and then playing with some watercolors, um, but. Take your journal, if you don't want to wait or you don't want to get a junk journal, and open up to a back page and slap your extra paint there. Stick a piece of wax paper in it and go back to whatever it is that you're working on. Um, you can definitely build up layers of, of journals that way. You can see, yes, I'm also using up extra stuff to create the outside of this journal. I haven't decorated it like I did my big one. Uh, which I do have a video for that uh, if you want to see my big dilutions already decorated but I decided on this one just to start using up some extra stuff to uh, create my journal cover on this one and eventually it'll become a journal but I don't work in this size very often so um, I've had it forever and have very little done in it so that's why I've started using it a little bit for sketching just because I want to say that I used it <laughs> So, anyways, junk journal. Highly recommend it. Highly recommend it. Gives yourself some freedom. Make some weird marks or use a paintbrush that you've never used or anything like that. Like, just try something in here with your extra paint. Um, and the great thing about it is that you're working in the middle of working on something else. So, you work in a hurry. You're not thinking or overthinking any of it. You're just like, oh, that has a blank spot stamp right there. Oh, that has a blank spot stamp right there. What's the next page? Oh, uh, yeah, blank spot stamp. Oh, no blank stop? Okay, I'll keep going. And you just flip through and do it quickly without any thought. You can always come back and conceive of a journal page later, but maybe you never will. Maybe it'll just be beautiful as a pile of layers of paint and depth and interest. So anyways, that's my recommendation recommendation as to why you should have a junk paint journal. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Art Journaling 101 and I really, really hope to have some more of these for you ASAP because I think this is a fun series and I hope you guys like it. All right, so if you like the video, please um, give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't. Um, I, I promise to be here more often, so... <laughs> if you're one of my followers. Thank you for still being here because I know I've been kind of 
I've, I've been absent. I, I do have good intentions to be here more often. So, any hoosies, I hope you guys have a fantastic week, and I will see you guys all again very soon. Bye for now.